the, the United States Constitution, for instance, was created by the, this so-called Congress that really never existed because it was just a group of guys that got together with no authority whatsoever. Matter of fact, there's a book written by, what was his name? Jeez, I forgot the name. Payne? Was it Payne? No, no. Rye Sanders Spooner. Okay. I believe it was. Wrote the book. It's called The Constitution of No Authority. Okay. Yeah, no authority yeah, I remember that. Yep, yep. Of any kind for these people to go do this. But you don't need authority to do something like this. Like I just told you, we could create a government by starting out to sell crutches and then break people's legs and make them buy our crutches. <laughs> and we could do it the same way the government does. Wipe your legs out from under you by, by economic disasters and, and all kind of things that they do and make them lean on our crutches. You can start a government any way you want, by anybody you want. you just got to overpower the one that's, that, that, that's in the office right now mm-hmm. in order to do this. It would be, uh, a, what do they call it? A, a, coup d'etat. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one name for it, a coup d'etat. And, and they got another name for it when you throw the ship's captain overboard. Mutiny. Mutiny, yeah, a mutiny, and get rid of the existing government. But <laughs> yeah, that's not going to do any good because you're going to get the same college graduate idiots in there to replace it. Exactly. And have the same turmoil that we have today if you did something like that. So I don't see any sense in, in trying to regenerate the government or restore it or any of this other stuff that's going on around this country. It, put it back the way it was if you can find people that understand the way it was. But I don't think you're going to understand or find people that understand the way it was. So what we did was created this little document, and it says right on the document that if you violate this Constitution that we have accepted, that you are breaching the contract, and you will be liable for it. Well, we handed this to a judge. Now, I've only had a couple of people do this. If I ever get that, we just ordered a new photocopier. Oh, you did order order one? What would you you settle on, Howard? Uh, I'll be sending a copy of it out to you, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> and I want you to distribute this around. Send it All to right. Lewis. Send it to everybody. Let them look at it and think about it. Okay. All right? Now, you don't have to use it. Maybe you don't agree with it. But the way we did it, we just handed this thing to the judge, and we had his name on it as the above-named public official. Mm-hmm. We didn't call him a servant. That That's more patriot foolishness. He's a, he's a public official. If you look in the law books, they're referred to as public officials. Mm-hmm. So let's use what the law says. The above named public official, Judge Joe Schmo, we accept his oath. And we handed this to him as we went into the court. Well, silly little things that we used it on, which was a guy who inadvertently drove past some guy on a wheelchair, not even seeing him along a country road, and the mirror hit the guy in his helmet. <laughs> well, he didn't even know it happened. The next day, he sees it on the news. He says, oh, my God, that might have been me. My mirror was caved in on the side of my truck when I went out to go to work this morning, and I was on that road last night. It was probably me. So he calls in, being an honest, decent, religious type of a person, and he tells the police it might have been me. Oh, they want to charge him. So they charge him. They bring him into the courtroom. Uh All right. You hurt me, Howard. Go ahead. You hurt me. Make him come to the court. Well, he takes this document in, he hands it to the judge. <laughs> judge says, okay, let's get started. Prosecuting attorney, what do you got to say? Prosecuting attorney says, well, he was driving up the road, and he hit this this guy on a wheelchair in the helmet. Judge said, did he do any injury? Well, as a matter of fact, no, the guy's not complaining about any injury. <laughs> he says, okay, proceed on. What do you got to say, prosecutor? Prosecutor says, uh, he did this, and he violated such and such a law of the state of Pennsylvania. Now, the judge says, uh, have you got any witnesses? She says, well, yeah, the fellow that we've accused. <laughs> the judge says, well, according to the Constitution, you can't be required to testify against yourself. Now, do you have anybody else as a witness? <laughs> Prosecutor said, well, no, the only one we have is this guy who admits that he did it. He said he can't testify against himself. This case is dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting way that the thing worked, wasn't it? We, Absolutely. We put the judge in a position of having to abide by his constitutional position that he was in. And he did it. And we never even thought to bring that argument up. Wow. That he couldn't testify against himself. The judge <laughs> brought it up. 
We just did this just to see what would happen. Well, it worked pretty good for us. Wow. Well, we used it in a couple other cases. We had the same kind of a, re- of a result. The judge didn't do anything out of the ordinary or anything strange, but he did do something that we consider to be strange in comparison to what they normally do, and he ab- abided by what the Constitution sets up. Yes, you're entitled to a jury trial if that's what you want. And he let them have a jury trial. Well, by the time they got to the jury trial, he had constantly been saying that I don't consent. And in front of the jury, the prosecuting attorney said, when the man doesn't consent, we don't have any jurisdiction over him. The jury can't find him guilty. And the jury said, okay, not guilty. 